Cascadia, the extra-liberal, extra-relaxed, and extra-rainy part of North America. Straddled between the United States and Canada, the people of this area have more in common with each other than the countries occupying them. Like the middle school excuse of, uh, my girlfriend lives in Canada, might actually be true for the people of this land. They disproportionately vote for more liberal laws, despite their eastern federal governments shackling them to more conservative ideas like privatized healthcare and militaries. The question is though, do they see themselves being occupied by a foreign power? There are people that dream of separation, but you can find those kind of people all over the world for all sorts of reasons. Although Cascadia has their own flag, the movement isn't as strong as Catalonia or Scotland or even Texas. Of course, that all could change. But as I stated earlier, they do have some disconnect from the Eastern governments, and it seems like an independent nation is the only way to meet the cultural and political demands of the populace. So what would happen if the Cascadians banded together to form a country based on their socialist and independent ideals? Well, let's give them the best possible starting situation. The states of Washington and Oregon leave the United States, and the province of British Columbia leaves Canada, and they then unite together to form one nation. Both, of course, without conflict. Sure, the metropolitan areas of Vancouver, Seattle, and Portland are the most interested in leaving, but let's simplify things for this three minute video. The total population would put it at 16.45 million, which would put it in 68th place in the world, just behind Ecuador. The total land area would be 534,507 miles, or for everyone else in the world, 1,000,000. 384,367 square kilometers. That would knock Peru down and make Cascadia the 19th largest country in the world. And though it is a pretty massive country, most will inhabit the Vancouver, Seattle, Portland metropolitan area. And these people would live very well, for the GDP per capita would be floating around 50,000 per person, which would put it in the top tens alongside Saudi Arabia, Ireland, and the United States. That is, of course, if everything would stay during the transition, which it would not due to markets always dropping during times of uncertainty. But when Cascadia pulls out of its infancy stages, huge film, video game, and technology industries will put it back in the top spot. And if they needed to, these places are full of natural resources to exploit. But most of all, this country can try its optimistic liberal socialist ideas, like $15 minimum wages, or universal health care and legalized marijuana. In America, the states were always used as testing ground for policies. When one state tried something that was proven to be a success, many other states would follow suit, and eventually, potentially, the federal government would follow suit as well. This is something that Cascadia can bring to North America and to the world as a whole. That is, of course, if Cascadia can survive the MEGA QUAKE. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe.